The direction of the U.S. economy befuddling the experts again and rattling investors in a huge way. We're beginning to get a full reckoning of just how bad things have been for big tech in 2022. We're finally ticking the boxes of earnings falling apart. Shares of the mega cap tech names falling with the rest of the market on pace for its worst year since 08. Nowhere was the disappointment expressed more profoundly than on Wall Street. First the market goes, then earnings go, then the economy goes. Google. Microsoft, Amazon, Meta Platforms. Ever since the Federal Reserve began raising interest rates, Microsoft stock has shot down by around 30% from its peak. Google went down by about 35%, Amazon crashed by around 45%, and Meta Platforms collapsed by 60%. Now, with a recession in the mix, there's only one question left to ask. Are big tech stocks doomed, or are some of these companies about to make a massive comeback? Your time is valuable, so let's get right into it. There's something big going on in big tech that you may not realize. They're not only being impacted by higher interest rates and lower consumer spending. A few of these trillion dollar companies are actually losing market share in key areas of their business. Take Meta Platforms. They pioneered advertising through social media, and today they make a whopping 99% of their revenue from advertising and advertising data. Everything from a major life milestone like getting married and having children to minor interactions like liking a movie or joining a group on Facebook can help inform advertisers. They can even segment users based on their browsing history and interactions on other websites. Meta's advertising Advertising revenue comes from businesses paying for that vast amount of data so that they can hyper-target likely buyers for their products and services. The more users there are on Facebook, the more data Facebook has for advertisers. The more time people spend on Facebook, the more data Facebook has for advertisers. And the more time people spend on third-party websites that they use Facebook to log into, the more data Facebook has for advertisers. While many companies were hit hard by the pandemic in 2020, Meta wasn't one of them people were stuck inside with nowhere to go, so they turned to platforms like Facebook and Instagram to pass the time. These compounding effects are what led to Facebook's massive rise over the last decade, and their explosion in growth over the last two or three years. And it's also how they're going to fall. Meta's market cap collapsed from over $1 trillion in 2021 down to just $370 billion as of today. So if it wasn't the shutdowns and it wasn't because of interest rates, what the heck happened? Well, first, Apple happened. Specifically, a little over a year ago, Apple's App Store rolled out a feature called App Tracking Transparency. This feature gives iPhone users the ability to opt out of apps collecting extra data to personalize their ads. Over 80% of iPhone users around the world opted out of ad tracking. In the United States, that number is over 90%. This one feature erased over $12 billion from Facebook's revenue last year alone. But that's only the beginning. As the effects of the pandemic subsided, people just aren't using Facebook as much. They're using TikTok. In January of last year, Mark Zuckerberg called TikTok a major threat to Meta's bottom line. Then we saw just how much of a threat in February of last year, when Facebook revealed their first decline in daily active users. And while Facebook's daily active user count has now started growing again slowly, it's nothing compared to the explosion of people flocking to TikTok. As I'm sure you know, Facebook launched features like Reels to compete with TikTok. The good news is that Reels keep people on Meta's platforms for longer. But the bad news is that Reels bring in much less advertising money per engagement than things like Facebook's newsfeed. And that's where the network effect kicks back in. Companies are taking notice, and they've started distributing their ads across a wider range of platforms, primarily on TikTok. Meta's financials speak for themselves. They reported $27.7 billion in revenue for third quarter of 2022. That's a 4% drop year over year. But instead of spending money to defend their core business, Meta is investing over $20 billion into the metaverse, a bet that may not see returns for more than a decade or more, if ever. As a result of lower revenues and higher expenses, Meta's operating income has dropped by 46%, and their net income has collapsed by 52% year over year. Overall, Meta reported a 20% profit margin compared to 36% just one year ago. Speaking of which, Meta's next earnings call is right around the corner, so I'm excited to see what happens. And if you want a simple and convenient way to follow those earnings, check out Moomoo. Moomoo is a one-stop stock market app that helps investors find great investments and execute their strategies. Moomoo even lets you trade during before and after market hours from 4 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern. They're also a member of the SIPC, which means your account is secured for up to half a million dollars. 
there are a ton of great features that make it super easy to follow earnings during this busy earnings season. For example, they have a great earnings calendar. You can get to this feature by tapping on the markets button and clicking on today, which lets you see every upcoming earnings call. From there, you can listen to live earnings calls right inside the app by tapping on the live button or rewatch them whenever you want by tapping on the video icon. You can even subscribe to companies to get notifications in advance. If you click on interpretations, you'll see summaries of earnings reports, transcripts of the Q&As, and opinions from financial experts and analysts all in one convenient place. Now it's super easy to keep up with earnings, but that's not even the best part. Right now, Moomoo is giving away up to 15 free stocks, each valued at up to $2,000. All you have to do is sign up and keep your account above $1,000 for at least 60 days to claim your 15 free stocks. This is a limited time offer, so go try the app using my link in the description below today. All right, Meta is not the only big tech company that's been heavily impacted by changes to the ad market. Around 80% of Google's revenues come from ads and they also report their earnings this week. However, unlike Meta, Google's ads can be found all over the internet, from Google search results and YouTube videos to third-party websites that use their services. Like Meta, Google also uses vast amounts of data that they collect to target ads to specific audiences, which makes them more effective and increases the likelihood that people will click on the ad. But unlike Meta, Google has a massive suite of apps like Gmail and Google Maps, the Chrome web browser, the Google Play App Store, and the Android operating system, not to mention a full line of phones. So their full stack of offerings is actually much closer to Apple's than Facebook's. But none of that makes their ad revenue immune to disruption. Just a few weeks ago, OpenAI unveiled ChatGPT to the public. ChatGPT uses natural language processing to analyze a user's query and generate a highly relevant response in just a few seconds. Seconds, no pages and pages of search results, and of course, no ads. By the way, this isn't just my opinion. Sridhar Ramaswamy was the head of Google's multi-hundred billion dollar advertising division from 2013 to 2018. Here's what he told Bloomberg just a couple months ago in an interview. Generative search from systems like ChatGPT will disrupt Google's traditional search business in a massive way. It's just a better experience. The goal of Google search is to get you to click on links, ideally ads, and all of the other text on the page is just filler. That Bloomberg article also ends with this. ChatGPT amassed a million users in about five days. That's an extraordinary milestone. It took Instagram 2.5 months to reach that number. And it took 10 months for Facebook. OpenAI isn't publicly speculating about its future applications, but if its new chatbot starts sharing links to other websites, particularly those that sell things, that could spell real danger for Google. But Google is facing another big problem, the US Department of Justice. Google currently faces two different antitrust lawsuits from the DOJ, both of which accuse them of monopolizing internet searches and online advertising. The first was filed back in 2020 and alleges that Google made exclusive agreements with certain companies to be featured as the default search engine in their products. The second was filed just days ago on January 24th. It goes after Google's heavy influence on the entire online ad market. Since Google buys, sells, and exchanges ads, the DOJ claims that it's in a unique position to set the market up however they want and snuff out potential competitors before they even have a chance to establish themselves. And all of that is in addition to the inflation and the recession causing consumers to spend less, which means big cuts in advertising. As a result of all of these headwinds, Google's revenue has plummeted. Their third quarter earnings came in well under expectations with only 6% revenue growth. That's a massive drop from their previous year's 46% revenue growth and it's their weakest growth period since 2013. So these big tech companies are facing a lot of pressure from all sides, not just because the Federal Reserve is still raising interest rates. That's why we've seen massive job cuts across the industry. Amazon has laid off over 18,000 employees. Meta Platforms has laid off over 11,000. Microsoft has laid off over 10,000. And Google just announced that they're laying off 12,000 employees. As if all of this wasn't bad enough, there's yet another reason that Meta and Google are suffering. And that's Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, and even Netflix are entering the ad game in a big way. Let's start with Amazon. One year ago, we saw for the first time just how much money Amazon brings in from advertising. That means when they report their earnings this week, we'll get their year-over-year -year numbers for the first time. They reported that they generated $31.2 billion from ads, which is already 7% of their total revenue. Just for context, that's more money than Amazon made from their subscription services. 
One thing that makes Amazon's advertising business different than Meta's or Google's is their data cleanroom approach. Amazon's data cleanroom keeps first party user data private by encrypting and anonymizing it. Approved partners and advertisers then have access to the anonymized data so that they can see high level consumer trends and patterns. I really think that this is the right balance between collecting data and protecting user privacy, which makes this much harder for regulators to disrupt. Also, Amazon is distributing ads and collecting data within its own ecosystem. Think Amazon.com and Alexa devices and so on. That gives them access to unique data that other big tech companies don't have, which means that they can train AI based ad matching algorithms with data that other big tech companies don't have. That's a big advantage in this ultra competitive market. Another advantage is that Amazon's ad business is optimized specifically for products, and they're serving those ads to people that are already searching with intent to purchase. That means their ads should convert at a much higher rate than Meta's or Google's. And since this type of search based ad spending is predicted to be the largest market segment within advertising, Amazon is expected to take up to 15% of the digital ad market in 2023. And according to Evercore's research, Amazon could be the first company to generate $100 billion in annual ad revenue. So now Amazon's not an upstart. They're doing 37, 38 billion in revenue. And my guess, Sarah, is that they're probably the next company to generate 100 billion in ad revenue. I mean, this is a couple of years down the road. They have a lot of things going well for them. Didn't see that one coming, did you? Next up, let's talk about Microsoft. Thanks to platforms like LinkedIn and Xbox, Microsoft's ad business has access to unique data provided directly by their users. Last summer, Microsoft acquired an advertising platform called Xander from AT&T. Xander allows Microsoft to provide an end-to-end -end pipeline for advertisers, including buying and bidding on ads, audience segmentation and matching, and ad delivery, analysis, and optimization. Alongside Xander, Microsoft also introduced vertical and credit card ads and they expanded their audience network into 66 new markets, including connected TVs and OTT ads. What this really means is that Xbox can begin competing with Roku and Amazon Fire TV for ad revenue. And thanks to a $1 billion investment in OpenAI, Microsoft is positioned to profit big time if ChatGPT lives up to its potential. In 2019, OpenAI agreed to use Microsoft's Azure as its sole cloud provider and will develop new supercomputer and AI technologies exclusively for Azure. That's a big deal. Then, just a few days ago, Microsoft announced an even bigger deal by investing another $10 billion into OpenAI for a 49% stake in the company. Right now, Microsoft makes around $10 billion per year in ad revenue, which actually makes them the seventh largest digital ad provider in the world. But the online video ad market is expected to grow by 14% per year for the next five years. So between their unique data sets and their platforms like Xander and OpenAI, Microsoft could end up giving Google a real run for their advertising money over the rest of the decade. Microsoft actually just reported earnings about a week ago. Office consumer products and cloud services decreased by 2%. Xbox content and services revenue decreased by 12%. Windows OEM revenue and revenue from devices both decreased by 39%. But you know what didn't decrease? Microsoft's search and news ad revenue was up 10% year over year before any of the acquisitions and investments that I just talked about. There's one more company that I want to talk about because they're actually also using Microsoft's Xander platform to deliver their ads. And that's Netflix. Netflix rolled out their new cheaper ad supported tier back in November which means that tons of businesses are now able to get in front of Netflix's more than 230 million users. They're rolling out their ad-based tier in 12 more countries in 2023 alone. Netflix could end up being a pretty safe bet in the recession because they can survive much lower ad spending thanks to their recurring subscription revenue. When everything is up and running at scale, Netflix expects ads to account for at least 10% of their revenues. Netflix added over 7.6 million users last quarter, compared to Wall Street's estimates of 4.6 million. No doubt that difference is at least in part due to them offering a cheaper ad-supported tier. Netflix shareholders should be pretty happy with their solid user growth. They're also probably pretty happy with Netflix's share price rocketing up by 70% over the last three months. Either way, hopefully this episode helped you understand that the advertising market is about to change in some pretty big ways. And even though Google and Meta platforms are the current kings of advertising, they can still be disrupted. But before you go investing your hard earned money into companies like Amazon or Microsoft, there's one more thing you really need to know. Don't worry, I laid it all out for you in this episode right here. 
And if you feel I've earned it, consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel. That lets me know to put out more research like this. Either way, thanks for watching, and until next time, this is Ticker Symbol U. My name is Alex, reminding you that the best investment you can make is in you.